Good morning, and welcome to worship here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Cincinnati, Ohio. My name is Pastor Alex Hoops. I'm one of the pastors here at Good Shepherd, and we are so happy that you're joining us. We're so happy that you have made time to tune in at this place, at this moment, to worship our God. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to focus this week, too, on a story as we continue in Lent. Uh, a teaching of Jesus after the disciples are saying, hey, someone wants to see you. Jesus says, oh, they're about to see a whole bunch. They're about to see a lot. And so are we as we keep our eyes fixed on the cross, fixed on Jerusalem as we are moving towards Holy Week. Next week will be Palm Sunday. We invite you to join us for all those, uh, those activities and all those worship services. While you're worshiping with us, we invite you to uh, join our live chat that's taking place. Um, you can tune in. You can check that out. Please tell us, hello, say where you're watching from. We love to see the community that's uh, taking place while we're worshiping together at a distance. Also, you're invited to participate in all of our liturgy today. Um, during the service, you'll find words below, and you can join in in our call and responses and in some of our singing. Now, May God bless us as we worship today. We ask God to have mercy on us, for it is because of his great grace and compassion that the stain of our sin has been. There is no guilt.
the promise of grace, let us pour out our hearts before God. Forgiving God, we repent of all the ways we turn from you. You call, but we do not listen. You show us your path, but we prefer our own way. Forgive us, heal us, and lead us back to you so that we might be a caring Christian community where we share God's grace, grow our faith, and serve others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and given new life. Amen. And now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Draw your church together, O God, into one company of disciples, together following our teacher, Jesus Christ, into every walk of life, together serving in Christ's mission to the world, and together witnessing to your love wherever you will send us, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading comes from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God. They shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another and say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The Gospel lesson we have comes from the 12th chapter of John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. And they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. So Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies... It bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. Those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And when I, and where I am, there will my servant also be. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. And the crowd standing there heard it. They said, it was thunder. Others said, no, an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered, this voice, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of our Lord. So, we want to see Jesus. Right? That's what they say. That's what's happening in the story. Some folks have heard about this amazing teacher, and they want to see it for themselves. Who doesn't? At this point, Jesus is a big star. He's done amazing things. He's well-known as an incredible teacher who speaks with some sort of authority, unlike anyone else they'd ever heard. He was just impressive in general. So the disciples hear this and go, yeah, sure, let's tell him. Let's let Jesus know he has an audience. 
And Jesus immediately warns them that he is gearing up. He's gearing up for being lifted up for all to see. And then he's going to the ground. But they will all see him soon in a way that will change the order of our world forever. See, we know what's about to happen. We've, we've heard this story before. This isn't new to us. We know how he's about to be lifted up very literally in a very horrific and gruesome display of violence and retribution. He'll enter the city to shouts of joy and Hosanna on Palm Sunday. He'll get to them teaching, and then he'll get to flipping tables and disrupting the empire by talking about this kingdom. And then the empire is going to decide to rise up and put a halt to it in a very demonstrative way. A cool way where they will lift him up. They will see him suffer for it. And so will we. On Good Friday, we will see the injustice of his trial, of his execution. Then we'll witness his innocent suffering. As Jesus proclaimed, we will be changed by it. We want to see Jesus, right? But I have to be honest, do we really want to see this Jesus? Do we want to see cross Jesus? In truth, sometimes I don't. In truth, it's because this cross Jesus, this Jesus that's lifted up, is so heartbreaking and messy. This Jesus is so convicting. And by that I mean, this Jesus has the unbelievable potential to disrupt me in so many ways. Challenge me and make me re-examine myself. Make me re-examine my actions, my choices. And that's the point, it seems. So don't look away. Watch. Because it'll change us. It'll reveal the things we don't want to see and we will be changed by it. The cross has a way of making things a little less black and white. It muddies up our ways of order and power. Christ on the cross has a way of changing how we see all kinds of things. Example being, in light of Jesus on the cross, you may no longer be able to see your enemies for the guilty criminals that they are. You won't see them that way, perhaps. You won't see them as deserving of punishment. You may end up seeing Christ on the cross and now see your enemies as victims. Those two sinners alongside Jesus who Jesus says, you're going to be with me today in kingdom. Christ on the cross may have you seen yourself in new ways as well. And admittedly for myself, it's in less flattering light sometimes. All of a sudden, I may look to Christ on the cross and realize, wait, if He's up there and I'm down here, then who am I? Am I a part of that crowd that would prefer Barabbas to Jesus? Am I a part of that crowd who has relegated to any individual this kind of death and torture? Who in my life have I been so disgusted and angered by that I would love to see them just go away? that I wish I didn't have to deal with them anymore, that life would be better if they were no longer in it. Christ on the cross may cause me to question my own actions, my own prejudices, my own sins in so many ways. It always has. Good Friday breaks my heart. And for you, it may reveal, like it has for me, some of the deeply held convictions that we have are not altogether good or true or just. We may see them then for the lies that we tell ourselves, lies that we live under, lies like somebody has to pay for this, lies like, well, there just isn't enough. Well, if there's not enough or there's not enough for me. Lies like some people are just not worth all the trouble. Is that true or am I, again, being selfish about what I'm willing to offer or care about? Lies like some people's suffering is justified. Think about this. In Holy Week, we hear the story of Jesus' arrest and Jesus' trial. And what we're watching is a very real and legal process. This is the basic foundation of society. Crime and punishment. It's actually a fair trial. Can end with an innocent person being crucified. We just watched it. We see it. That's what's going to happen. This story of Christ being lifted up 
it throws this whole system into question. In fact, it's so wrong, God literally then has to intervene and say, nope, that's not how it's going to work. And the tomb becomes empty on Sunday because it just can't be that way. What a week. I'll say this again. Don't look away. Experience it in its fullness. Soak it in. Be changed by it. Be drawn to Christ through it. We've all seen something that's changed us. As a kid, I remember serving meals on Christmas and Thanksgiving with my parents to immigrant communities in southwest Florida. That then developed as I got older. I came to see it when I saw the poorest place in our hemisphere. I see Haiti in ultra poverty. That is hard to unsee. Because that kind of poverty is hard to fathom. I don't think it leaves many people unchanged. And in truth, I'd rather not see it. Who wants to see poverty? Most of the time, it makes me feel ashamed. Shame that I have so much and I've done so little with it. It Makes me look at some of my priorities and anxieties and concerns and make me go, wow, those were very silly. It's like going to the doctor when you're worried about something being wrong with you. You want to go, but it may be just easier to ignore it. You don't want to find out that it could be something serious. Seeing what it is actually means having to deal with it emotionally, physically, spiritually. And in the case of Haiti, I was confronted by the unjust nature of, heck, the lottery of my birth. Being born 800 miles away from Port-au-Prince means being born in a place where I have, to put in baseball terms, I was born on third base, like with a lead towards home. Like, we're doing great. I'm about to finish. The more I learn about Haiti's history, the more confronted I am about my own ways that I have uh, taken part in this, in the nation I'm a part of, in societies that have taken advantage of Haiti. I'm confronted with how much God has given me, and I have to ask myself, how do I not support my brothers and sisters in Haiti? I remember upon my first return home from Haiti, I came back and saw things very differently. We had very limited water when I was there, and now all of a sudden I'm able to flush clean water all the time. Go to the bathroom in it. It's wild. It just struck me how the innocent suffer while I live in absolute luxury by contrast. I'm changed. My eyes are open because of that. And now I'm bound to that mission. I have to walk with those saints, advocate for those saints, support hoops for Haiti, right? I have to do that. I have to get people on board with this. It's the least I can do because Christ has been lifted up in their suffering, and has drawn me in, and I can't ignore it any more. Christ has drawn me in. A painful experience. Just as inspirational as an empty tomb, the resurrection story has pulled me in. I hope both these stories draw you in, too. I hope you'll consider making a special donation to Hoops for Haiti, right? It's important. It's part of our identity as people to be drawn to the foot of the cross. Because as hard as the crucifixion is, as hard as Good Friday is, we want to see Jesus, right? So we can't look away. We have to realize that every time we seek to punish and scapegoat, any time our brothers and sisters go hungry, whenever a child is orphaned and widows weep, we are to see Christ crucified, the one lifted up. And in the midst of the heartbreak, remember, there's another way. That other way is the way of discipleship, a way beyond violence, a way beyond vengeance and retribution, a way beyond venom, a way beyond indifference, a way beyond apathy and selfishness, a way beyond fear. There's the way of Christ our teacher. The one lifted up for all to see. Defined by mercy. Defined by forgiveness, by love and restoration and resurrection. Don't look away. You will be changed. And it will be written on your heart for having seen it. It's hard work, but it's good work. So this season, the coming week, don't, don't look away. It's Holy Week. Take 
the full journey. It's COVID time. You know, we may be busy. We may have different schedules. Tuning into live events. Showing up in the parking lot may be hard. But seriously, join us on Palm Sunday to celebrate this city celebrating Jesus' triumphant entry. Then listen to the story as Jesus begins teaching and people realize what he's actually talking about. He's talking about real forgiveness, a new reality, a new kingdom, true peacemaking and restoration. And on Good Friday, remember how that caused us, the mob, the crowd, and the authorities to react with violence. With those words, someone has to pay. With those words, someone has to suffer. With those words, you cannot get away with this. And then on Sunday, on that Easter Sunday, let's hear God's answer to that. There's a new way. Spoiler alert, it's good news. It's great news. But don't look away. Take it all in. We're about to see Him lifted up. And we will be drawn in. Amen. our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly. Boldly for the church, for the world, for all those who are in need. Gracious and merciful God, we give you thanks for this story today of a promise that when we see you, we will be drawn to you. Help us to see you in our neighbors. Help us to see you in our community. Help us to be clear reflections of care, of life and love to all those who suffer. 
that we might be a clear reflection of your kingdom. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, you fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder with your presence. You call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant us weather that prepares the soil for seeds, protect all from violent storms and flooding and wildfires. Help us to be good stewards of all the bounty you will produce so that all might taste of your abundance. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You promise to write your law on our hearts. So guide citizens throughout the world to shape community that reflects mercy, justice, and peace. Give them the creativity to work for the welfare of all people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, you sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence. Those who are lonely or feel unforgivable. Those who need healing of mind or body. And those who are dying. And those who grieve. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death. Empower this community of faith in discipleship. Equip children and teachers in our uh, schools, in confirmation, in all of our teaching and learning ministries. Give us your truth. Give us your wisdom. And teach us to follow Jesus. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us words to worship you. With all those who have died in Christ, bring us into life everlasting. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, we entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you. You who are faithful. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in worship today. We're so glad you could be here. You could contribute in the chat box and uh, in your own worship at home. We think it's very important that we still do this community thing even when we're apart. We hope this worship has blessed you. If you'd like to find out more about our mission, you can check out our website at goodshepherd.com. Uh, you can click on News and Events to sign up for things we've been doing. Also, under News and Events, we have our special appeal right now that I talked about in the sermon about Hoops for Haiti. It's our March Madness fundraiser to uh, raise funds for our brothers and sisters through the Haitian Tamoon Foundation. Um, also, if you'd like to donate to our mission at Good Shepherd, you can do that as well at goodshepherd.com slash donate. We'll see you next week. And now for our dismissal. God is with us and calls us for a purpose, to share God's grace, to grow our faith, and to serve others. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just so.